Antonov AN124 Ruslan and Lockheed Martin C5M Super Galaxy were born of Cold War imperatives, engineered not just to carry weight, but to carry strategy. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, armored brigades, disaster relief equipment, and the infrastructure of modern warfare. Though separated by origin, doctrine, and design philosophy, they ultimately serve the same mission. Bridging continents in a single flight, delivering what can't be delivered by sea or rail, and doing so with unyielding presence. Yet the similarities only go so far. Under the surface, these two behemoths reveal stark differences in engineering priorities, operational doctrine, and long-term viability. When the Antonov AN-124 first pierced the clouds on December 24, 1982, it heralded a new era in strategic airlift. A Leviathan, capable of carrying up to 330,000 pounds of payload, dwarfing almost every other aircraft of its time. Conceived in the later stages of the Cold War, its mission was clear. Haul intercontinental ballistic missiles, tanks and outsized cargo across global distances in single sorties. Over the following decades, the Ruslan would cement its legacy by setting record after record, including lifting more than 377,000 pounds to 35,000 feet and completing a non-stop 20,151-mile flight. An astounding testimony to Soviet engineering ambition. At the heart of the AN-124's enduring capability lies a structure that balances brute strength with aerodynamic finesse. The fuselage, primarily constructed of aluminum alloys, reinforced with titanium around high-stress areas like the landing gear bays and cargo floor, was engineered to survive punishing cycles of takeoffs, landings, and heavy load stresses. Measuring nearly 227 feet from nose to tail, the aircraft's double-deck configuration separates the cargo bay from the crew rest and avionics compartments above, which allows missions to continue for days without exhausting personnel. The cargo hold itself spans more than 118 feet in length, with a width of 21 feet and a height of 14 feet, making it large enough to transport main battle tanks, satellites, or even locomotives without disassembly. Access to this cavernous space is where the Ruslan's engineering starts to truly shine. Both the hinged nose and tail ramps can open simultaneously, enabling drive-through capability that's unmatched by most Western heavy lifters. The aircraft can also kneel by adjusting its landing gear struts, lowering the fuselage by nearly 10 inches to bring the cargo deck closer to ground level. The landing gear system itself, composed of 24 wheels distributed across five main landing gear assemblies and two nose gear units, was designed for rugged field operations. Each wheel is equipped with its own braking system and the suspension system can absorb uneven terrain loads, allowing the aircraft to operate from semi-prepared runways, a crucial asset for military deployments and humanitarian missions. Above the bay, the AN-124 carries a self-contained 30-ton overhead crane system mounted on rails, which can maneuver cargo within the aircraft independently of ground support. The crane, combined with electric winches embedded in the floor, allows the AN-124 to unload or load itself entirely autonomously, even in austere environments. These design decisions reflected Soviet doctrine, where strategic assets had to be self-reliant under wartime conditions. Even the auxiliary power units mounted within the wing routes are oversized to allow full onboard systems functionality without external power, ensuring operations in remote theaters. Equally impressive is the AN-124's structural resilience. 
The airframe was designed to withstand over 20,000 flight cycles, and most of the operational fleet has undergone significant life extension programs to keep flying well into the 2030s. The aircraft's skin incorporates not just aluminum, but also steel and titanium elements in areas prone to fatigue or impact stress, especially around the cargo door mechanisms, floor beams, and engine pylons. The floor itself was built to take concentrated loads reinforced with titanium rails that allow for the movement of tanks, armored vehicles, or generators without damaging the underlying structure. Specialized shock-absorbing mounts also enable the aircraft to carry sensitive cargo like satellites or large-scale medical equipment. Aerodynamically, the aircraft's swept wings, spanning over 240 feet, are equipped with full-span leading-edge slats and massive trailing-edge flaps that improve low-speed handling critical during short-field operations. Each wing houses a D-18T turbofan engine, which not only delivers 51,600 pounds of thrust, but also incorporates thrust reversers that allow the AN-124 to land within just 3,000 feet if needed. In combination with spoilers and air brakes, this makes the aircraft surprisingly nimble on short runways, despite its maximum takeoff weight of 892,000 pounds. The Antonov AN-124's flight systems, though rooted in 1980s Soviet design philosophy, were surprisingly advanced for their time and remain functionally competitive today especially in the upgraded AN-124-100M variants. The original cockpit featured analog dials and an extensive flight engineer panel, but the latest modernization packages have introduced digital avionics, western navigation systems, and improved communication suites to meet ICAO and NATO standards. Even more remarkable is that the AN-124 was designed with a six-person flight crew in mind. Two pilots, a navigator, flight engineer, communications officer, and loadmaster. Unlike most Western strategic airlifters, the AN-124 includes dedicated crew rest areas and even a small galley and lavatory, an essential provision for missions that can stretch across multiple continents without landing. The aircraft's endurance capability was also central to its mission. With full fuel tanks, it can fly up to 3,200 nautical miles with a maximum payload, or over 9,500 nautical miles when lightly loaded. Fuel consumption is predictably massive, with the aircraft drawing from over 74,000 gallons of kerosene spread across multiple wing tanks. The D-18T engines, though thirsty, offer exceptional thrust-to-weight ratios for a cargo aircraft, enabling not only steep climbs, but also short takeoff runs for an aircraft of this size. However, Russia's reliance on these engines has become a vulnerability. Built by Motor Sikh in Ukraine, the D-18Ts are no longer accessible to Russian operators due to the war, leading to a maintenance crisis for the Russian fleet. Ukraine's Antonov, in contrast, has found ways to maintain and even upgrade these engines, with help from European partners and Western suppliers. An ironic reversal given that the aircraft originated in Soviet Ukraine. In the vast theater of modern warfare, where battles are fought not only on the front lines but across continents, strategic air transport emerges as a silent yet indispensable force. It's the lifeblood of military operations, enabling rapid deployment of troops and equipment, delivery of critical supplies, and evacuation of personnel from the most challenging environments. And at the pinnacle of this capability soars the C-5M supergalaxy, a behemoth of the skies that redefines the very meaning of airlift. 
In a stunning display of aeronautical mastery, this titan of the skies toppled 41 world records in a single flight, effortlessly usurping one that had been fiercely held by the Russian Tupolev Tu-160 since 1989. And since then, it has managed to set more than 48 other records in its category, including the altitude in horizontal flight at 37,000 feet, the altitude with a payload of 200 165,000 pounds and the time it takes to climb as 27.5 minutes. It outshines even the mighty B-1B Lancer, which holds 83 records, a feat of no small measure. The inception of the C-5M Super Galaxy traces back to the mid-1960s when the US Air Force sought a strategic airlifter capable of carrying all the equipment necessary for a US Army division halfway across the world. The largest cargo plane in the US Air Force's arsenal, the C-141 Starlifter, faced a significant limitation. It couldn't accommodate the most formidable ground asset in the U.S. Army's repertoire, the main battle tank. The transportation of such heavy, oversized equipment was a problem yearning for a solution. The Lockheed Georgia Company was awarded the contract in 1965, and the maiden flight of the first C-5 Galaxy model took place in 1968. As a titan of global aviation, the C-5 Galaxy has been crucial to America's strategic airlift operations for generations. Despite the impact of prolonged use on its reliability, tests showed that the C-5s still had 80% of their structural lifespan left. Consequently, instead of phasing out these colossal workhorses, Lockheed Martin proposed in September 1998 to modernize the C-5 fleet with cutting-edge avionics and engines. The first flight of the re-engineered C-5M took place in 2006, and the first fully upgraded C-5M Super Galaxy was delivered to the USAF in 2009. The C-5M Super Galaxy is the largest aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory. With an overall length of 247.1 feet and a height of 65.1 feet, this gargantuan aircraft boasts a wingspan of 222.9 feet. It can take off with a maximum weight of a staggering 840,000 pounds. To put that into perspective, C-5M is more than two and a half times the length of an NBA basketball court. It stands as tall as a six-story building, and its wingspan stretches beyond half the length of an American football field. When it comes to weight, this giant can bear a load equivalent to roughly 210 large sedans at maximum takeoff. But how can a single aircraft carry this much cargo? The cargo compartment of the C-5M Super Galaxy is cavernous. The cargo area is about 121 feet long, 19 feet wide, and 13.5 feet high, providing an estimated 34,490 cubic feet of cargo space. This allows the C-5M to carry nearly all the Army's air-transportable combat equipment, including items like the 74-ton Mobile Scissors Bridge. The aircraft can carry a maximum payload of 285,000 pounds. It has the capability to lift two M1 Abrams tanks and can transport nearly a company of troops and gear anywhere in the world with aerial refueling. Both the nose and aft doors open, allowing ground crews to simultaneously load and offload cargo from both ends, reducing cargo transfer times. The full-width drive-on ramps at each end enable double rows of vehicles to be transported. The C-5M Super Galaxy can carry more air-transportable cargo than the C-5 aircraft and be loaded with cargo quickly and efficiently. The C-5M Super Galaxy boasts an unrefueled range of approximately 5,524 miles when carrying a cargo of 120,000 pounds, and its range extends to about 8,046 miles when flying without a load. However, with the capability for aerial refueling, its operational range becomes, in essence, virtually boundless. 
In terms of performance, the C5M's upgrade under the RERP has given it a significant edge. The C5M Super Galaxy Transport Aircraft is powered by four GE CF680C2 turbofan engines, each developing a thrust of 50,580 pounds. Thanks to these, the Super Galaxy has 22% more thrust, a shorter takeoff run, and 58% faster climb rate, and significantly better fuel efficiency, which extends its range by 900 miles. The aircraft can fly at a normal cruise speed of 0.77 Mach. Moreover, new avionics equipment and subsystems have enhanced the C5M's reliability and maintainability. This concludes our episode that provides a glimpse into the mighty Antonov AN-124 and C-5M Super Galaxy. So what do you think about these formidable aircraft? What other pieces of military hardware would you like us to cover in our future episodes? Also, if you were lucky enough to see this aircraft up close, or better yet, fly one, please comment. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.